Hi, Anastasia. Hi, James. Hi, Emilio. Hi, James. Great, great that you're both here. Um, excited to have the two experts to talk about uh, high power modules with silicon carbide inside of it. On one hand, we've got the silicon carbide in the Semitrans 20 at 2 kV, and on the other hand, the uh, silicon carbide 2 kV also in the Skip 4 IPM. Anastasia, I've been really looking for, forward to this session today. Your recent webinars really stirred things up. Thanks, James. Yes, I'm very glad. It has got people to think about new possibilities. The most exciting thing about this silicon carbide IPM is that it uh, gives OM access to the advantages of silicon carbide, at the same time reducing the risk of designing with a new technology they might have limited experience so far. Okay, great. So the, the, today's focus for you really is absolutely about the silicon carbide version of the Skip 4. Yes, correct. We will have overcurrent, over voltage, over temperature protections and the possibility to control and to parameterize it over the CAN interface. And all this combined with our highest reliability due to well-known skip sinter technology, base plateless uh, module design and aluminum copper bond wires for the extended lifetime. Okay, great. Um, one of the debates that we've had in the past has always been this topic that the skip is a single source product. Surely silicon carbide is not going to make that any easier. Actually, it's make it better. Um, why? Um, in the situation where each silicon carbide chip is a kind of single source in itself, uh, because of its special electrical and switching characteristics, Skip becomes an enabler because the um, task for matching of driver and this silicon carbide chip as well as availability of the chip is then task of Semicron Danfoss and not a headache for the customer. Okay, sounds good. i um, going to challenge you again. I know that the DC link capacity is a topic as well when you're designing with silicon carbide. Um, is that then part of the Skip 4? No, then you need a stack, or I mean our uh, SIG SemiStack RE based on Skip 4 SIG IPM. We have a low inductive uh, DC link capacitors and optimized bus bar design for SIG operating. Thanks very much, Anastasia. Great to hear the latest on our Skip intelligent power modules with silicon carbide inside. Thanks, James. Emilio. We're here to talk about the Semitrans 20 with silicon carbide inside of it. Absolutely, yeah. In the past, we've talked about Semitrans 20 uh, as part of an, AN, uh, an ANPC topology. Um, is this looking to replace that, or what's the positioning on this? Well, in power electronics, there's always a balance. So with the Semitrans 20 and ANPC topologies, um, we're basing that on silicon. And the silicon carbide 2KV is really focused on 1500 volt applications where you only need a two level type topology. So it's a bit simpler than three level to control. It's also more power dense. Instead of nine modules, we only need three. So we can really bring that down. Okay, so is this targeted at renewable applications? Because I'm guessing whenever I read about renewable applications, people only ever want to talk about cents per kilowatt. Exactly, yeah. So with the 1500 volts that we're focused on here, energy storage, solar, wind, hydrogen, these are the applications that we're talking about. And of course, cents per kilowatt or dollars per kilowatt is, is a big factor. There is a difference in the price between like a silicon ANPC type power module and the silicon carbide device. The silicon carbide typically comes at the premium, but like I said, there's a balance. With that premium cost, you get more power density, you even get more efficiency compared to the ANPC, which is a little bit less expensive, but more complex to work with. Okay, you mentioned power density. That was going to be my next question. Power density, that's, that's what it's all about as well. Certainly, uh, I think power density is a big factor, especially if you consider energy storage as an example, that they come in these large containers or in some amount of container, 20 foot is pretty standard, um, and they fill them with batteries, they have the converter inside, and at some point the, the batteries are getting more and more power dense, higher milliamp hours or amp hours in these batteries, so you have this, this big storage capacity, and so your converter typically needs to get bigger as well but then you're taking up the battery room, and that's you know, real estate for the batteries that you don't want to take. So the converter with the Semitrans 20 with silicon carbide, 2KV, is more power dense, meaning you can make a smaller converter and have more room for the battery. Okay, okay. So I, I guess the other thing which I hear people worrying about is supply chain security. 
recent years, what with uh, interruptions to supply chain through COVID, through shipping lane issues. What's the story from a multiple sourcing perspective? Certainly, it's a big topic for us. So the Semitrans 20 itself is an industrial standard power module. It's the next big standard for high power, high reliability. We're seeing a lot of opportunities and requests across the entire market. Um, and then when we bring in the, the silicon carbide chips, we have multiple sources that we're working with. So that's always a big factor for us. If there's ever hiccups in one um, chip delivery, we can always work with the other if need be. So even in just one power module, we have a true multiple source device. Okay, great. Sounds like you've got it covered as well. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time. Um, actually, you know, given that you're both here, I think there's a good chance to, to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, aren't we competing for the same customers in the solutions division, in the industry division? Emilio, what, what's your take on that? Well, I think that there is um, there are definitely differences in the integration between Skip and Semitrans 20. Obviously, the Semitrans 20 is a power module by itself. Typically, we would focus on customers who already have the engineering capabilities for designing the drivers, for the, doing their own heat sinks, and so it really has the flexibility to, to offer each company their own um, individual way of approaching this, this design. They can have their own IP, maybe they have their own IP in the DC Link or something like that, and certainly in their own driver, so it gives the possibility that they can work with that with just the power module. Okay, thanks Emilio. Um, Anastasia, how do you see this from a skip perspective? So our um, customers are the customers with core competence in the end application. They uh, concentrate on the control software and making their USP with this uh, special control algorithm that they have. So with Skip, they have a very good base for this new technology they can rely on. Okay, so I guess what you're saying is you're saying in, in some of these emerging markets, we've got people that might have some really clever control, but they've got no experience, no resourcing in power electronics, and that's where the skip is the play. Exactly, so it helps to save the time to the market and to reduce the risk um, with a new technology. Okay, and I'm guessing also then maybe there's a play for, for us with stacks there as well? Uh, then higher the integration level is then easier and um, is it for the customer and then the lower the cost are at the end. Okay. Anastasia, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Emilio. So from a customer perspective, it's your choice. Whatever level of power electronics you want to buy into, you need to buy into, we're here to support you. Come and talk to us.